Let's talk about disaster recovery. I would like to define disaster first in terms of IT. The simplest definition I could come up with was a serious disruption. That's what we call a disaster. If we want to go a little further into technical definition of it, it would be an unexpected problem resulting in slowdown, interruption or network outage in an IT system. That is how we would call it a disaster. Disaster could be natural disaster such as earthquake, flood, fire, landslide, inferno. It could be. It could be technical disasters. Could be like power supply failure or a network outage in a bigger area or common thing commonly it can also be result of an human error human actions such as misconfiguration or unauthorized modification may also result into disaster so if we want to focus on how disaster recovery actually work if i have to explain what disaster recovery process is it is basically a process of preparing for and recovering from a disaster obviously you can't recover without being prepared for it like you keep a spare wheel in your car what you're doing, you are preparing to mitigate that disaster when it happens. I won't call it disaster. A flat wheel is not a disaster, but basically it is still an interruption, right? So if I have a spare wheel, I can obviously replace that wheel and get going faster. If I do not have a spare wheel, my time required would be much, much higher in terms of getting back on the track. So organization address the following three component that they take care of preventing disaster so prevention is one of the thing they also have to anticipate it that what could go wrong and then prevent it from being wrong and if it happens we need to have a mitigation plan too like the example i use maybe there is a fire we need to have fire department who could get, take care of that so that's how we would be able to recover from it now disaster recovery and availability is sometimes confused but they are little different disaster recovery major objective for one time event if an event happens, that is what we will call disaster recovery. Or in the context of that individual event, event, we will talk about disaster recovery. Whereas availability measures mean value over a period of time. And the values we compare there is different. When we talk about resiliency, resiliency itself is made up of disaster recovery as well as availability. And disaster recovery is measured in RTO and RPO format, whereas availability is measured in mean time between failure and mean time to recover. Our focus of this discussion would be on RTO and RPO. Let's go ahead and talk about RPO and RTO. I will first talk about RPO, recovery point, point objective. If I had to lay it down into plain English, I would say how much data you can afford to lose, right? Or how much data will be lost when disaster actually happens. This has basically relation, this has relation to your backup or replication schedule. Let's see that. So if you have configured an application backup or replication to happen daily, let's say every day at 10 p.m., then maybe you completed the backup of that thing on Monday, 10 p.m. backup is successful, Tuesday, 10 p.m. backup is successful, and on Wednesday, at 9.59, there is a disaster, which means you have to now recover. If you recover, you may have lost 24 hours worth of data because your last restore point was created on Tuesday, 10 p.m. So here, if I have a daily schedule for backup or replication, my recovery point objective is 24 hours. If my application does not need that type of RPO, maybe I start taking backup on a weekly basis every Sunday, 10 p.m. Then I have a RPO of one week, maximum one week of data may be lost. And if I am taking monthly backup of my application, then I would be having a possibility to lose up to one month of data. That's what we mean by recovery point objective so it is directly proportion to whatever is your backup replication schedule is and based on that you may be minimizing the data loss probability for very critical application you may be performing a continuous replication or a continuous backup so that it would be almost zero or actually zero depends on how and which application you are using for your backup and replication right when it comes to recovery time objective, the same example of a car would fit in here. So let's say a wheel fails. If you have a spare wheel, you can replace that faulty wheel and you will be again back on track in few minutes. Here my RTO is few minutes. There was a problem, but I recovered from that problem in few minutes. But what if, if I do not have a spare wheel? Then maybe I have to wait for a towing truck to take my car to a garage and then get it fixed or maybe or remove the wheel from that vehicle and then take it to a 
repair shop get it repaired and come back and be again on the track so that will be increasing the time i was having my journey interrupted or there was a higher downtime if i was not prepared for it if i did not had a spare wheel i would have issues now having a spare wheel doesn't mean that you would never have a flat tire yes you can have it and here if i have one flat tire maybe i have one spare wheel but what if there are two flat tires i would still have my higher downtime in this case so you can prepare for it most cases we expect it would be one wheel who would fail and that's why we are keeping one spare people who go for long drives or for long cross country drives probably they would prefer to keep at least two wheel so they could mitigate those corner case scenarios also so rto completely relates to what is your recovery time required for your application so i hope this thing is clear now let us compare them tabularly so if i talk about rpo rpo's focus is on data loss prevention how can i prevent data loss that is where we rpo is coming up right expectation from ceo cto could be rpo rt of 0 can it be achieved yes it can be but then you have to think about the balancing act that how much money would be required to provide that rt or rpo and is this application worth that much of money being spent on just for recovery so it depends so rpo focus is on data loss prevention rto focus is whole business recovery if something goes wrong it could be a single application could be multiple application but if they are all connected and required for my business i want to run my whole business so that's what rto would be all now next point here would be about dependency so rpo depends on your backup frequency what is ever your frequency is that would be your rpo rto depends on your speed of recovery how soon you can recover when we have to describe that in layman's language rpo talks about maximum data loss whereas rto talks about maximum recovery time and how you should be considering how much rpo and rto is required so for rpo you would consider how often your data changes so i have a bad job which updates data every hour then probably i should be fine with a 1 hour rpo but if i have a job which is continuously changing data and it is very critical data then i have to think about a lesser rpo in that case and in terms of rto we talk about how much downtime you can handle what can be possibility of something going down and still not hugely impacting your business obviously impact would be there but it may not be that much if we have lesser rto so it depends you may achieve rpo 0 rto 0 also but then you have to consider the cost factor also so i hope this thing is clear and you have a better understanding of rpo and rto i'll see you into the next lecture thank you